does this mean that I am minimalist now? In this video, I would like to discuss a habit that I believe is foundation for the minimalism, and actually it can give a freedom to everyone who decides to implement it. I picked it up while reading a book called Subtract by Eli de Klotz, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, and yes, it is as easy as it sounds, subtract, or actually it's not as easy as it sounds, subtract. Have you ever come across a situation when you decided to improve a recipe and in order to do that you added more ingredients or more spices or more salt or something else? Or maybe while planning a vacation you decided to add some extra spots to make sure that you take most of the vacation. In most cases when we try to improve things we usually add more stuff, like adding a pair of shoes to our wardrobe to improve outfits, adding some more sentences to our email to make sure it's more clear, or adding more resolutions to our new year resolution list to make sure that we take most out of this year. And this is very natural behavior based on our biology, our economics and just being a human. Thousands of years ago it was safer to have some extra food supplies because you never know how the hunting or gathering will go and in order to ensure that you survive you have to have the stockpiled food and while the principle is still true nowadays we have much better access to food but we still keep those behaviors of picking some extra pack of crisps or cooking a little bit extra we constantly hear on tv and internet that we have to create more produce more buy more and have more in order to be happier and have better lives. But it's actually not true. And it could be true in the past during the recession times when we had to buy more and produce more in order to speed up the economics. But nowadays it's really overboard and we buy too much of things that we don't really need. We can also do it just because it feels good. Adding leaves evidence, subtracting doesn't. It feels so nice to add an extra slide to the presentation so that my idea come across better. And it definitely feels a bit of a failure when something that is already there, something that has been worked on, has to go away. As for me, I do feel that I constantly, maybe unconsciously, add some more stuff to my life. And it's maybe not that physical one, because we have a very small apartment and we can't really fit more stuff in our apartment here, but actually mental as well. So I usually add more habits to track, more routine steps like evening routine or morning routine steps, so it takes more time for me to prepare for bed. Adding more courses or subjects to learn, so I don't really have enough time and space to transform this knowledge to wisdom. An interesting idea that I picked up from the author of the book is that subtraction is not the end result, it's actually an active work to come in from more to less. And it's also different to rejection, for example saying no to another event. In this case, yes, you are not adding something to your calendar, but you are not actively working on removing something from that. Subtraction is not as simple as it sounds, because sometimes in order to have less, you have to rework the whole system to make sure this less working well for you. Let's say I decided to work on my outfits to make sure I always have something to wear, that I don't spend too much time choosing my outfits and I don't have too many things in my wardrobe. And adding some more items to my wardrobe, like buy an extra pair of shoes or extra bag, will not really solve the problem because they will solve just one or two outfits that I already have. And throwing away stuff also won't solve the issue because I will have less things to choose from. The idea here is that I have to make sure I know everything that I have, I have all the different categories of clothes I have, and I need to figure out how can I mix and match them so that I have multiple outfits that I can wear. And as soon as I create multiple outfits that I would like to wear, I need to check, do I have enough items, do I have enough quality items, and what can I get rid of so that I don't overload my wardrobe. And this is a very good example that if I would like to create a wardrobe with less items but still good outfit options, and spend and less time choosing my outfit. I have to do quite a lot of work beforehand to make sure that this system works for me. And this is actually one more takeaway from the book that subtraction is not always the cure for all the problems. Sometimes you have to add things, for example, adding some quality items to your wardrobe to make sure that the basics are covered. Going forward, I would like to make sure that I think about subtraction when I'm thinking about problems and try to use subtraction if it's possible in the situation. And here I compile the multiple ideas how I can start with subtraction and I hope you find some of them inspiring and let's go into them. So in the future I would like to plan less when traveling so that I feel the vibe of the place better. Add less ingredients to my meals 
and ensure I experiment with the ways I cook them. Compiling a list of New Year's resolutions, I would like to choose three to five the most important ones and focus on them and remove the other ones. Planning my day, I would like to reduce the number of items I have on my to-do list and focus on the ones that I have more. Working with colleagues, I would like to ensure that I give them enough information and don't overload them with unnecessary details. And also, I would like to reduce my awake time and hence increase my sleep time to ensure that I'm more productive and more energetic during the day. This is just beginning. I'm sure you have more examples of your own. Please share them in comments below. I hope this video was interesting, entertaining and useful for you and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Happy lives and... And I don't spend much time, time, time where it's... when it's possible.